I'm Liz Finlay, and welcome to this podcast series on inspiring spiritual entrepreneurs. We'll be chatting with some of the wonderful business owners who come to Starseed Business Networking. This is a free monthly meeting I co-host on Zoom with Steve Nobel, and you can find details of the next meeting on the events page of my website, lizfinlay.com. Today, we have the pleasure of chatting with Katya Aurora Vincent. Katya Aurora is an energy healer who helps her clients to reignite their innate spark of joy, facing their shadows and leading to a new sense of personal freedom and confidence. So Katya Aurora, thank you for being with us. Thank you for the opportunity. (laughs) So you grew up in Eastern Germany, And you then moved to Ireland. Tell us about your journey. Yeah. So I was I was born behind the wall, was nine years behind the wall and then moved. Well, I kind of, you know, still went through all my upbringing and everything in Germany. But at some point, I just needed to come out of Germany to just be myself. And Ireland felt like a right place to go to. My sister had been there before. So she she was raving about it. She really loved it there. Um, and as we weren't able to travel so much when I was smaller, it was lovely to go to a country that was Western. So um, that was one other uh, one other thing in there why I went to Ireland. And um, it's very it's just beautiful to be there. I think once you were in Ireland, once you you never you always come back. And I still feel the pull now. Um, but yeah, it was it was renowned for its um, spiritual. Um, people as well that that was another reason why I went there I had my first Reiki initiation in 2005 beginning 2005 and right afterwards I went to Ireland so I had I kind of had an inkling of okay I want to expand my knowledge and my awareness of things um, and what better place to go than Ireland and funny enough the first half half year I did not meet anybody remotely spiritual at all So that was my initiation phase. Could I stay long enough to actually meet somebody that was of relevance? (laughs) Um, But yeah, I, I, after half a year, I met um, one particular person there that it was almost like, you know, when you, um, when you fall in love first, it was like a, a, a boom, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, he wasn't my partner in any way, but it was so, so, um, I, I'm thinking for a word now, so profound. It it made me not eat for one day, like that that relation, that that just meeting wow. the person. So it was really profound for me, that, that particular relationship. And we talked for a whole day, catching up on our lives as if we were always, we always known each other and obviously we have, but it's like, you know, it, it, it was so fascinating to me. And then my journey started unraveling. So I had um, an apprenticeship to be a pre-Celtic shaman. I had that for about two years there. And um, I learned a lot. I just learned a lot. And, and Ireland is so um the energy there is it the veils are so thin that you can access the nature spirits very profoundly and all through my time there I was house sitting for a time I had a dog to look after I went out for dog walks all the time and Ireland um has a lot of forests with moss in there and and you can really see like little holes in the ground we can see where the fairies live and where the gnomes are and where the you know the the tree people live you know you can you can just see you can visualize it there and I always saw them in the in my third eye so I I was walking the path and saw them and would feel the energy the mood of the day because every time I went into the forest it was a different mood it wasn't the same every day so sometimes they had a celebration going on sometimes they were really quiet because something had happened just before I came in like it you know I I I just really loved that and I I started to um, say hello to them all the time (laughs) I was just so, and I still in my mind now when I I do meditation, I sometimes go to that particular little forest place where I had my favorite time of, you know, spending time with the fairies there. I could see fairies when I was little, 
but I didn't remember and didn't realize that up until the point that I got to Ireland and I remembered things again and suddenly realized, you know, the magic that I did as a child, which was which I was told wasn't real, was actually real. I realized that in the forests of Ireland. And then I started to reignite that. So the reignition is is my own journey, right? I reignited that in myself by talking to the nature spirits and and just yeah, being more of who I I am and who I was, um, peeling away the layers that are in the way that you know usually come up through your upbringing and stuff. But yeah, it was a really profound time for me, Ireland. <laughs> um, and then I knew from Ireland, um, everything was kind of coming to a close there. So I was I I did African drumming there, things with my hand. I I did lots of different things just to try things out. And that came to an end and there was other things like my work was kind of coming to an end. And I had a friend in England who just happened to say, oh, I've got a I've got a room becoming available in my in my house. Do you want to come over? And I then went and I knew um, I was told it was, was another another person telling me I was going to meet my husband in England. I didn't know it was an English person. She said to me, "Was he was European, but I'm going to meet my husband in England. So I knew I had to go to England and I didn't plan to stay for long. I, I planned like staying a year. <laughs> you know, I, as, as things go, you just you just find your your person. And then I just I knew I had to stay. But it was really difficult for me and I, uh, it, to come to England because Ireland is very slow paced. I lived in Berlin before. Berlin is kind of half the pace of of London if you if you want to compare that and an island is is even slower than that it's probably like half half that of of Berlin so really slow and coming to London which is really fast it was a challenge for me so I I kind of all the spiritual awakening that I had in Ireland was kind of not there when I first came to England it was kind of completely buried because I needed to earn money I was in the normal corporate world and completely drowned um, I didn't even have the money to get back to Germany to visit my parents. It, it was really difficult. Um, but yeah, then then I met my husband and suddenly things then started to evolve properly. And I became a little bit more relaxed in being here. I learned to be with the fast pace. And I am a really fast paced learner and doer. But I was I had gotten used to the slow pace in Ireland, which which then that was that was the challenge basically but it was good because it again it, it helped me develop my skills and you know be more open and I got through the jungle of the real world and came back to myself and then the other things here like I did magic school that's another uh, you know a deep dive for a whole year um, learning different skills um, and yeah that's how everything happened for me and really I couldn't keep the things that I've had I had learned to myself I wanted to share them I didn't want to you know it, it yes it did a lot of good for me but I also had a lot of people around me that were struggling with things I was always the one they came to that was always the, the case um, everywhere I went and so it, it was natural for me sh to share things and that eventually then led me to um, open my business even though I had done things before with people one-to-one -one um for a long time but it, it just you know naturally happened it just rolled on and um yeah through the whole journey that I went through in England I had three burnouts um one was an island actually the, the when I started to be there I changed my diet from a complete vegan in Berlin this haven of veganism to uh to Ireland where I had a questionable vegetarian diet <laughs> And my body just didn't didn't like I, I I kind of went there, was there for four months and I had a shift work pattern as well. That was not good for my body. So I had my first physical that like was a very physical burnout then. And then I changed where I was in Ireland and then the awakening awakening happened. And I had two burnouts when I was in England because I again, it was similar, but it wasn't um, physical as much. It was more mental. So there's different kinds of burnouts that you can have. But I learned so much about that as well and how you turn it around. And it's a pattern, right? It, if you had it once, it's very likely it happens again unless you change something dramatically. And that's what I have done. Um, and the last one I had was 2016. And that was really interesting as well. I was always guided on my way. Um, and 
that particular one was um i was just snapping over over a tiny insignificant detail at work something went wrong and i just crashed i just broke down in tears and everything um and on that same weekend i had scheduled a laughter laughter yoga workshop because that interested me on that same weekend so i had my burnout midweek i think wednesday it was and then i went went to have this laughter workshop on the on the weekend and it was my saving grace i mean um at the time they allowed me in that workshop to have tears coming through so i had a proper healing journey in that in that laughter workshop it was all about laughter and how you how you do that as a workshop that that was the thing to learn and i learned that but i also had a lot of space there to express my feelings so i cried and laughed the whole weekend through and i continued that journey with myself and and it somehow then changed my perception of you know not taking things too seriously anymore <laughs> um you know like we all do we go into these spins where everything is so serious and then it becomes really easy and and flowing and so that helped me a lot the laughter itself helped me a lot um but i have to say you know i did it in tandem with my own shadow work so i was always looking deeper too as well as laughing and allowing the lightheartedness and allowing that to raise my frequency out of the dumps when i was there so but yeah the shadow work is allowing the dumps too, being in the dark because that wants acceptance too otherwise you can't can't reach higher heights so i'm i'm all about the balance and that, and that is kind of coming into my work now as well so what i do with people is is usually um wh wherever they stand in their in their journey um where they're out of alignment in some shape or form which is obviously why they come to me i then help them to find the realignment find where where it is that they got stuck um i help them understand it and i usually help them to work through that and i don't even want to use the word work because i find it's play it can be play it doesn't have to be hard it can be uncomfortable in places and that's important because that is part of the journey but it doesn't have to stay uncomfortable it, you come out of it very quickly and you can then turn things around it's the um awareness about things that is important and how you handle them and it it's usually very rewarding if you allow yourself to be uncomfortable uncomfortable along the way so that then things can shift and turn around for you can you share with us one tip that has really helped your business Yes, for me, it's the shadow work on myself. Like I'm not doing it by myself all the time. I can do that now, but I also have people coming in to, to hold space for me because you have certain blind spots that you can't see by yourself. And so you need to have somebody else just pointing that out so that you can you can help, you can be on your way. And I find that because I am a healer myself, I would be a hypocrite if I didn't do that myself. I need to progress myself so that I can help other people. And I, you know, the, the life is a journey. So you're always progressing and there will always be something else that you want to go through or, or shake off or change in your energy system. So I keep on doing that for myself because I find it really rewarding. And that would be my tip because the, a lot of things come up when you when you start a business and that, that can really help when you look at the energetics behind it, because we often miss that. It's, you know, it's 50 50 energetics and physical. And if you can look at the energetics of it and, and release some, some blocks there, then you will have a much, much easier journey along the way. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. If you'd like to connect with Katya Aurora, then head over to her website at katyavincent.com. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Bye, everyone.